Today's video is entitled Potential Energy, and we're going to go over a quick overview of potential energy, specifically gravitational potential energy, and then we are going to do a few simple example problems for potential energy. Before we get started, please don't forget, please subscribe to my channel, Step by Step Science, get all my excellent physics, chemistry, and math videos. You can give me a thumbs up, you can subscribe, you can share, and please leave me a comment, let me know what you think of the videos. I appreciate it very much. Here we go, let's get started. This is not just potential energy, but in this video, we're going to be talking specifically about gravitational potential energy. Mostly, that's like when you take something in the surface of the Earth and you raise it up above the surface of the Earth. When you pick something up and you raise it up. But a nice general definition is the energy stored by an object because of its position relative to other objects. That means that in order to have potential energy or gravitational potential energy, you have to have two objects. Okay, and oftentimes we just refer to gravitational potential energy as stored energy, the energy that is stored in an object due to its position. Okay, now here are the equation symbols that we use for potential energy. You will see this quite often, potential energy, P-E. You will often see a U for energy, and for potential energy, you might see a little subscript P or PE down here. And I saw this once in a while, the V, I'm not sure how that fits in the whole thing, but the most common equation symbols that you will see are PE, obviously, for potential energy. You maybe see a little GE, G here for gravitational potential energy, and a U. All right, now the SI unit, the metric unit, the international unit, for the gravitational potential energy is the joule, named after James Prescott Joule. Remember, the joule is the 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 uh, the uh, the unit for energy and work. So, if you have kinetic energy or potential energy or work, they all have the unit of the joule. Okay, here is the symbol. The symbol here is the equation that we use to calculate gravitational potential energy. It is PE equals mgh. The m is the mass. The mass must be measured in kilograms. If you're given the mass in grams, you need to convert it to kilograms. G is the acceleration due to gravity at the surface of the Earth, commonly 9,81. Sometimes you'll see 9,8. I like to use 9,81 meters per second squared. That's the acceleration due to gravity. And H is the height or the change in height. You can really only have potential energy if it's relative to, to a different surface. Like I have to have two different surfaces. So it's not just the height. We like to say it's the change in the height. You raise something up, you do some work, and you give it some potential energy. Now, we have this equation for the potential energy, and you can just plug the values in, M times G times H. That's pretty straightforward. But you should also be able to solve for the M, and you should also be able to solve for the H if you're given the other values. You'll see there's four values. If you're given the other three, for example, the potential energy and the height and the acceleration due to gravity, you should be able to solve for the mass. Okay, and for the mass, we're going to be using and solving for H, we're going to be using this triangle, which I like to call it the magic math triangle. You could call it the magic science triangle. You see this used a lot with um, density, and you see it used a lot with Ohm's law, V equals I times R, but you can also extend it in this case, because this is a relatively simple equation, to use it for the potential energy. So we got to put these four things, the PE, the M, the G, and the H, inside the triangle, so that we can use the triangle to help us rearrange the formula to solve for M and to solve for H. Now, if you know how to do it mathematically, you know, it's, 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 it's not that difficult, but I think this is a good, uh, a good helper that people often use. The PE goes on the top, and you see we have these three things, M, G, and H, multiplied times each other, so we're going to put those one, two, and three like that. Okay, now, we want to be able to use this equation and use this triangle to solve for the mass, the G, and the H. Not so much the G, because that's a constant, but definitely for the mass and the H. So you put those things in there like that, and let's just say we want to solve for the mass. Okay, then what you do is you cover up the M. You can put your finger or your pencil over the M, and you can see you have these other three things. The PE is up here, and the G and H are next to each other, 
well, what mathematical operations are we going to use? Well, when we have things next to each other, we multiply. So we have a little dot here for multiplication. And we have one thing above the other we're going to divide. So I cover up the M, and you see I'm left with the PE above the G times the H. So that means that the equation for the mass is simply the PE, the potential energy, divided by G times H. Now you got to do this in kilometer. You got to do this first and work inside the parentheses first and then divide that into the PE. So it's PE divided by G times H. Okay, so that's how we come up with the equation for the mass. Well, what if we want to come up with the equation for the height? So we cover up the height, and basically now you can see a PE above M times G. So now the height equation is just the height is equal to the potential energy divided by M times G. And once again, you have parentheses here. You got to do this first and then divide that into the PE. Now, you could, of course, be asked to, and I see you very rarely, but you could be asked to solve for G, like confirm that G is 9.81 or something like that. So you can cover up the G, and you'll see that now you have the PE above the M times the H, so it's just PE equals M times H. You should notice the pattern. If you have want to solve for one of these three things, then you take the other two and you put it under the PE. You divide the PE by the other two. So if you want to solve for M, put those over there. If you want to solve for H, put those two things over there. If you want to solve for G, take those two things and put them under there like that. Okay, now the idea isn't that you're going to memorize this equation, this equation, this equation, and this equation. The idea is that your teacher will give you this equation, usually given the base equation, and then you can use the math, magic math triangle or your own math abilities to solve for M, H, and G like that. But I find my students find that kind of a thing very helpful for the triangle like that to come up with the other equations. Okay, now we're going to do a couple uh, simple uh, examples, I think. So here we have for gravitational potential energy, a monkey is swinging from a branch of a tree. Suddenly the monkey sees a tiger below and swings up to a higher branch. Okay, this should say up to a higher branch for safety. Is moving up, and when he swings to the higher branch, his potential energy increases by 215 joules. Can you believe that? If the monkey's mass is 6.5 kilograms, what is the change in the height? So you can see we have four things, P, E, M, G, H. G is a constant. We're given the P, E. That's 215 joules. We're given the mass of M. We know G, and we're going to solve for H. So we could just get the triangle out if you want to like that. Cover up the H, and you can see the H is going to be equal to, or the height is going to be equal to the PE divided by M times G. So you plug the values in, 215 for the potential energy. The M is the mass, 6.5, 9.81 meters per second squared. You can see the mass is in kilograms, the uh, energy is in joules, and you come up with that. That monkey, when it saw that tiger, swung from one branch to another, and must have moved up 3,37 meters to change its potential energy by 215 joules. Okay, okay. Now that was good. Let's try one more. We're going to solve for the mass this time. We have a potted plant. It's sitting on a shelf of a flower store where it has 150 joules of gravitational potential energy relative to the floor. You see, in order to have potential energy, you have to be above something, and that's relative to some other surface. So the change in the potential energy from the ground floor where it would have zero joules up to the shelf, it has 150 joules of gravitational potential energy. The plant is 2.5 meters above the floor. What is the mass of the plant? So let's get out the triangle again. You can see the mass is going to be equal to PE times G, G times H. I put G, G times H and H times G here. It's the same thing. And we can just plug the values in. We have 150 joules. We have the height is 2.5 meters. We were given, once again, that G is 9.81 meters per second squared. And therefore, we get that the mass of that plant must be 6.1 kilograms. That's kind of a big plant. Okay, so I think that is it for gravitational potential energy. I have some other videos I've made for gravitational potential energy and work in kinetic energy, of course, which you can link to in the upper right-hand corner of this video. 
But thank you very much for watching. Hope finding helpful. If you did, please do all the following four things. You should, of course, subscribe to my channel, Step by Step Science, get all my excellent physics, chemistry, and math videos. You can give me a thumbs up for this video. You can please leave me a comment for this video. And don't forget sharing is caring. Share this video with all of your friends. Show them just how much you care. Thank you very much for watching. We will see you in the next video.